Hi, I'm Jonathan Burnham, aka Kalos. Do you want faster times? Times that you can do in the Forza GT spec hopper that gets you to be more competitive, gaining potentially even a second or more? Well, this is my tuning guide, and I'm going to show you how. Let's get into it. This is my tuning guide. You can already see it's a long video. Everything is time stamped. You can go where you want to go, but I do believe you should watch it in order. Take your time and go through it. It's long, it's dry. Uh, we get nerdy on this, and really, it's to help you see what I'm doing and walk yourself, go through the same process I'm going to. Uh, we start at Road America. We go through and do a whole bass tune. It's a good track for getting gearing, for getting a balance of speed and cornering power. And then we're moving on to Silverstone and adjustments we had to make for Silverstone. We will be using the Aston Martin. Uh, it is a bit of an underpowered car. So, I mean, you can take my tune, but even with the tune, it, it's going to be a little slower than some of the other faster cars. But I can guarantee I can beat any of the default cars with this car. It, well, maybe not the Audi, but that's a different story for another time. So, with that, with that I'm going to throw a little disclaimer out, and uh, then we'll get into the tuning. So, a quick disclaimer before we get started. I do want to say, uh, this tuning guide is done under optimal settings. So, it's done at noon, fixed time. Uh, fixed time, it's done with 100% uh, rubber. It, it's optimal conditions. And it's a qualifying tune. Uh, the tunes I do build, if you download mine, are loose. So it's important that if you go through this guide and learn how to tune, like I'm tuning here, that you also keep in mind, you're going to want to test your tune on medium tires. You're going to want to test your tune in uh, practice to see how it behaves with worn tires you may find that you need to dial back the oversteer in order to have a slightly more controllable car it's okay necessarily maybe to have a really fast car on soft tires that's really loose for qualifying but then you need to make sure your car is also race ready also uh, this is not a magic pill there's no magic pixie dust and boom you have an awesome car and you're going to be competitive you need to be setting fast times with the actual base cars to begin with. If you want a bit of a reference, you can go back and check my video uh, on the, the, the fastest stock tune cars. Gives you a good idea of what kind of times you should be setting, at least at Road America. Uh, but, and this is really, this guide may get you a second or more. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need to be consistent. You need to, there's other race skills that you need to have and time trial skills that you need to have in order to really get the most out of this tuning guide. So if you're really struggling with uh, just controlling most of the base cars, uh, you're probably not going to get a lot out of this. And you definitely want to go back and just really learn how to drive. Most of the base cars are very understeery. Uh, and if you can get fast and consistent with those, then this tuning guide is going to have a much bigger impact as you, as you see how to oh, make these cars faster. And with that, we're ready to start. This is my tuning process from start to finish. I did leave out the fact that I will start with the default tune and do bass laps, even if I'm going to a new track and I have a previous tune, I will still do bass uh, laps with the default tune, uh, just so I get a comparison. But this is the whole process. I start with zeroing out the steering alignment, uh, gearing. The place you'll make the most gains is in car balance. If, you, if th that's the thing you want, you just want some really quick gains, uh, that's a section really to pay attention to. Camber and tire pressures, uh, it's complicated. Uh, in general, lower tire pressures are better to a point until they're not. Uh, however, getting kind of an optimal camber and optimal camber and getting 
uh, optimal tire pressure ratios is a bit more of a process to get. Uh, but I, you can skip that and just go straight to the last part of just lowering your tire pressures until you stop gaining lap time. Uh, and it's usually not going to be far. It's somewhere in the like usually 27.5 to 29 range. It depends on the car too a bit. And then the final part is trouble troubleshooting and fine tuning. There are points in this video, I may have cut them out, I may not have, where I really kind of just dive in and fix things on the go. So it, troubleshooting and fine tuning is some things you go, and I just kind of go over in each of those in uh, a bit of detail in that section. All right, with gearing. Uh, the big thing with gearing is we want to make sure the car can get a clean launch and first gear, a little bit of tire spin, and come out just below the power band so that it'll actually take off at a standing start. The second part is about evening out the gearing. Some of the cars have funky gearing. You can gear by track, but what we're really doing is we just wanna optimize the power band, make sure that we're doing our shift changes, that we're maximizing the amount of time we're staying near peak power. All right, guys, here we are under tuning. I'm about to load my spec stock build for my uh, car. This is the actual car you would have in the Forza GT multiplayer race. You can see, let me go here real quick. You can see I have two of these. They, uh, I will make these public, but we are in the Aston Martin and I'm loading the spec stock. So when I load it, load spec stock, it shows required CP car points 400. That's what I need to actually make it so that you could use it in an actual, actual uh, multiplayer race. As you can see, it has all the standard settings. So the first thing you do, we already know we've done the base tune. The first thing we're gonna do is gearing. And the reason for that is as you can see, if you look over, I guess you can't see, I'm probably blocking it. Here, let me hide myself real fast. Hide myself under gearing. All right, if you look in the bottom left hand of the screen, you see the gearing tab and you can see the last two gears are really long. And you'll notice that when you're actually in a race or you know testing this car. And, and not only that, the fourth gear is really short it makes it a bit bizarre if you want to do that by track that's fine but uh we don't necessarily want that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm actually uh let me set up the car i do f five laps nope wrong thing five laps plus one and then we'll go to soft tires let me bring myself back up here. All right. So we're going to take the car onto the track. I've got this set up under the testing. So I'm going to show you what I do to, to kind of get the gearing. Let me turn down game volume just a little bit. We don't want that. I'm going to turn that down to 30. There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I notice this is I kind of skip gearing on a lot of cars. A lot of the cars, the gearing is pretty good. Uh, and I had a problem with this car. I've already done the tune for. I'm just going to walk you through my process. So you're going to want to bring up telemetry. And you're going to want to know where your shift point is. So you look at where it says RPMs and power. And I'm sorry, let me uh, let me hide this real fast. So you can see, yeah, RPMs and power. So what we're looking for is where the power peaked. So you can see it stopped moving 552 around 7,000 RPMs and then starts dropping off after that. I'm gonna go come around the next bend is I wanna know when I shift up, so I'll show you real here real quick. I'll go up to 7,500 and shift. I'm already at 540 horsepower. 
So I'm actually shifting probably a little too late. And I'm finding for the early gears, the shift point's about 7,300. It drops about 6,000. So you figure around 6,100. You don't want to be below 6,100 when you're doing a shift up. And I already know that 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 the gearing is just bad. Here, I'm actually gonna turn around. The other thing I wanna test is my launch. I'm gonna come up over this hill. So I'm gonna test my launch. Let me, all right, do that again. You get a little bit of tire squeal, and as it kicks in, I'm already at the right spot. So it's got a pretty good launch. I don't need to change first gear. What I really need to adjust is third and fourth gear or not sorry fifth and sixth gear they're just a little too high so i'm going to come in to gearing tune car i'm going to go into gearing and i i don't like these now i can let me hide myself again kind of annoying i wish all right and i'm going to watch that gearing as i adjust these and I'm going to bring these kind of in line, the bars, so that they're kind of in line. I don't remember if this is the exact final. I will post my final. But that gets them into a bit better. What I'm looking for is about a shift point of 7,300 through most of the gears. I actually don't like how short fourth is. I'm going to make it just a little longer. And because of that, I can make fifth gear a little longer and then sixth gear a little longer. Don't worry too much about the top speed over there. Uh, you're not going to reach it on most tracks. So obviously this isn't a Le Mans setup. So now I'm going to come out. Now that I've got better gearing. I know my launch is good. Let's turn around again. Off into the grass. And I want to shift about 7,300 should be about the ideal spot for each shift. And you can see I could possibly get away with 7,200 shifting a little sooner than that. But for right now, I'm happy with this. It means I don't... And let's go out of telemetry. You can see the red line is at 7500 now with the way i have the car set up for gearing you'll want to shift about 7300 each time this car doesn't show you the rpm on the dash but yeah shifted about 7300 so now we've got the gearing corrected and, and for the launch generally for the launch You want to be able to get a little bit of wheel spin and then as you come out of the wheel spin already be in your power band so you could see right there as i came out i was around 60 6, rpms pretty good spot to be for for a launch it gives this car a relatively solid launch i didn't really have to change much for it there are some cars that have terrible launches the viper the lamborghini where you really have to change that first gear and the second gear to kind of bring the launch into line so that pretty much does it for gearing right now you're not trying to make any major adjustments we're not changing the gearing for by track and corner we're just trying to get an even amount of gearing so we can be consistent with our gear shifts next we'll move on to steering alignment we'll move on to uh zeroing out the alignment Zeroing out the uh, steering alignment, uh, it's pretty simple. I'll just go through it. It's just to give us a starting point and then see what kind of laps we do and how what the cat kind of determine if what the caster is. And at this point, we also raise the right height a little bit. All right, now we are on to alignment. And this is what I do for pretty much all the cars when I really want to just start out with a baseline build. That, I, that I'm working from. So I'll go into my tune. You've already adjusted the gearing and I'll come here to alignment. Now, the camber for Forza 
I found even after I go through my camber and tire pressures generally is in the 1.5 to 1.0 range. So that's generally where I start. I will check my camber later, uh, but it doesn't usually fall too far from this range. I want to zero out my toe front and rear toe. I want to know how the car behaves without any of these uh, fine tuning adjustments. Uh, Part of this process is determining the caster. Generally six to seven. I always start out at seven and see how the car behaves first. And then I will come over here to springs. And this is a general rule for me. I, I start the car off with two clicks up on the ride height for the front and rear. Now, I'm not making any adjustments to the roll bar swings or anything else. I'm just zeroing out the car compared to what it is with the default tune and then seeing how it behaves from there. So we'll apply that change and we will get out on the track and see how it behaves. We already have now normally at this point I would have done a spec stock uh, since I did my uh, guide on what's the best stock cars. I already have a baseline of about 2069 for this car with the spec stock. So from here, we're really just doing some laps to get a feel for how the car behaves, for how it behaves without the, uh, with our base stock adjustments. And we can do a comparison too if it feels better to what it does when the base stock. Now already, one of the things I notice is a little more feel out of the wheel with the higher caster. Feels pretty comfortable with this car. Some of the cars, like some of the Porsches, I won't go at a seven. I'll be like between six and 6.5, but it feels pretty good on this car right now. And, and again, this is just a baseline to figure out, okay, how is the car behaving? And, and at this point, you do want to push it a little bit just to get a feel for what some of the issues is. This is a very stable car out of stock. So even with these adjustments, I feel make it a little more stable. There's a, and we'll find out here at Canada Corner that it has quite a bit of high downforce understeer. It just really wants to, you have to really kind of come off the gas a lot to get it to come around the corner. It actually handles pretty well. It's got too much understeer to take this flat, but even with a tiny lift, it does pretty well. So. Just making those adjustments already makes this car a bit more solid. One of the first things I notice is it does have a good bit of oversteer on the throttle out of slow corners, which will become an issue later. So mostly the car feels pretty solid. It just feels slow. And we'll do a quick lap too around here just to see what we can do with these minor adjustments. We know a 206.9 was the baseline that we started with. All right, you can see 2067, not a massive improvement, but the car felt better than the baseline tune. And I got a couple tenths out of it. And I probably could have caught another tenth. This car can take the kink flat, and I wasn't quite able to do it on that last lap. But, okay, we I only know we've got a really start solid start. I'm happy with a caster at seven. I do feel though that there is a bit of not just high speed understeer but also an issue with uh 
really the car just not wanting to go where I point. So it's just slow to move in as I'm starting to turn over and I'd like it to be a little quicker. So we're gonna address that next. And on to car balance. Uh, car balance is really where you wanna start to gain the most lap time. And I'll show you as we go through this, just how much lap time I'm actually gaining. It, it can be pretty significant right off the bat, especially when you get the aero balance right. Not every car uh, will need to be changed that much. Uh, some have pretty good aero balance. The Audi has good aero balance at the start. Some have decent mechanical balance. The Aston Martin's pretty darn close, or at least a differential. You know, with the Aston Martin, they didn't have to change the differential much. So it really depends on the car. All right, now we're getting into the part of the video. Uh, I already went over in my Erms versus Midi video, me video. So if you've seen that, you're going to hear a, a lot of the same stuff you've heard before. Since we're at Road America, we're going to start with aero balance of the car first. Remember I said it has a tendency uh, for understeer at high speed. So what we're going to do is, oh, not upgrades. Don't go on the upgrades. That's not what we need. Tune car. We're going to come over to arrow 276, 441. Uh, Road America is a speed track. Uh, this alone, just dropping the arrow out from the bottom is going to gain us a bunch of high end, top end speed, and it's going to help the car rotate through the corners. We don't know yet at this point if we actually need like higher arrow. Sometimes you'll find a good arrow balance, but not have enough arrow and you'll have to raise the rear and the front together. But at this point, we're just going to start out with 276 and 331 and see how it goes. Now, I already know uh, where I end up, but I'm going to show you kind of how I got there. So, Road America has a bunch of high-speed corners. And what we want to make sure is by dropping out the rear, we don't suddenly become unstable in a lot of these high-speed sort corners. We want to make sure we're getting the right aero balance. And why did that reset that to medium tires? Did I run that baseline tune and medium tires? Yeah, I probably did. So, set our fuel again. I don't remember. Don't mind me. I'm not really a professional, I just pretend to be one. So we're going to start with turn one, which is a high speed corner. Downforce helps a lot. I'm actually going to break a little rate right around the, than I was. Oh, look how much better that turns in already. It just went right where I wanted it to go. So already by changing the arrow balance, we're getting more precision out of our high speed corner turn in. It, the car's still a little lazy through slow speed corners, but we'll get to that. But it does turn through them pretty well. You can see a little unstable through there, but not too bad. The carousel is the real test. How much am I going to understare at the carousel? I'm still understeering through it, but definitely a lot better. Yeah, I finally broke 18, whereas before I wasn't even breaking 18. Still understeering a bit through the kink, which is going to be important. So really, I want to be able to take the kink flat out without struggling with the car too much.
still struggling to get it to turn in but again this car struggles with a bit of pointiness it makes it easy to drive but slows you down doesn't give you the precision you'd like so not a very good lap we're going to give it one more shot and see how this one goes actually check that we're going to back up and we're going to raise the arrow we know we couldn't get this through the kink in the carousel so that's really our two primary all right we're going to go in here go back to tuning go to arrow and raise it to 300. Will that be enough to get us through? We already know in some of the quicker high down force corners, it's creating a little bit of instability problems for us, but we'll come back to those later. There we go, we went through the kink, flat. You gotta remember, we raised the, the uh, lowered the rear. We lowered the rear wing, which gives us a lot more speed. So we're hitting corners at that we could take flat before are a little harder now. So now we got to compensate for that loss of arrow balance. Or a loss of... Uh, compensate with the arrow balance to get the corner. But look at that. Already a 205.9. We're now a full second faster than the base and eight tenths of a second faster than the, uh, the base steering... Or the zero out tune I had done just through changing that arrow uh, just so you were aware I still didn't like the full down force uh, balance I did end up raising that 2310 and that was kind of the final I came up with for I, it was either 310 or 320 uh, I'll show you the spec at the end but 310 So for right now, 310, 331 is the final arrow balance. And already we're a second a lap faster than we were, but there were before. All right, now we're going to uh, move on to mechanical balance. For the most part, I feel this car has pretty good mechanical balance, but it is slow to turn in. And one of the ways we address that is the stiffness of our springs and suspension or AR or anti roll bars. So let's go into tune car and we are going to go over to anti roll bars. Now, one of the things I learned is you want a really stiff suspension. However, full stiff suspension does not work for all cars. So what I do with this car is uh, you can see we have about a seven uh, ratio between the front and rear. So I'll raise that to 40. Come on. There we go. Or I'll do it this way. And I'll leave this at 33. So for right now, I just want to feel how the car feels with a super stiff suspension with the same balance it had with, a, with the softer suspension. So now we'll go back in and we're gonna do more laps. And we just wanna feel how the car behaves. Now it should have a tendency to the car's front end to follow our front wheel 
At least that's the idea. One of the things I learned with the Aston Martin is it does not really like being super stiff. And uh, hopefully some of those issues will show up here. So yeah, it turns in much snappier. But I'm also finding almost too snappy. Reacts much quicker to downshifts. But not necessarily in a good way. But it is hustling its way, rotating through the corners with just the tiniest hint of understeer. And you can see, because of the much stiffer suspension, I over-rotated there. Because it literally just kind of went where I pointed it almost too much. And we'll go through the kink here. Oh, it turns in much quicker. However, now it doesn't like that curb. With the softer ARBs, it liked the curb much more. <laughs> so, since we're in testing, I did not mean to rewind there. So, you can definitely see some issues with just going super stiff. What I ended up doing was kind of slowly lowering the ARBs until I found the point it was comfortable. If I remember correctly, it was about 35 on the front, I believe 29 on the rear. Again, remember I had a little bit of understeer. So we'll put it there. One of the things I do is I do tend to soften the springs. Uh, so like from here, I would go from five, about 30. So with the stiffer side to side, the softer springs will give me a little bit more forwards and back and also a little bit more give when I'm hitting curbs. And I met, uh, lower that to 508. Now, in my previous testing, I learned real quickly doing this kind of led to the car diving a bit too much. And this is one of the issues uh, we'll talk about with fine tuning. Is that I did end up, because I didn't want to deal with all my testing with all the diving, is I ended up raising the front back up. And the rear back in another 10. So I only ended up going down 20. And I also ended up coming over here to kind of stop that diving effect and just raise that from 25.5 to 26.5. So now that we lowered the roll bars, we did raise the rear just a little bit. We go back on track. And we see how that behaves. Now I am going to want to be testing the curves and you could see how that made my car want to almost over rotate. So I'll come back to that in a moment. There's a lot of troubleshooting you kind of do as you go. With the stiffer suspension, it really, uh, the camber effect where it really pulls towards the curb if you go on it, is re gets really bad. So I might get the, the car balance I want, but now I have another issue to deal with. So already by lowering the ARBs from the high stiffness to just a, still pretty stiff, but already the car is a more compliant, much co more comfortable over the corners. 
and, and I'm also finishing out these laps. I'll kind of cut it, cut it out a bit in the video, so you can kind of see the step-by-step -step improvement in the laps. So, I still have a bit of a problem with that throttle. The rear doesn't come around as much there, but is still a little iffy. Coming into the carousel, another big pass. Yeah, it's now in a pretty comfortable place. And now we'll see how it takes the pink. Oh yeah, much better. So it absorbs it now. Absorbs the kink, whereas at the really high stiffness of ARBs, it didn't. So that's something to look out for, because not all tracks are friendly. Not all tracks are very friendly to a stiff suspension. But you will find a stiffer suspension creates a lot more compliance in terms of getting the car to go where you're pointing it with the wheel and to turn in quicker you just don't want to overturn it so now let's see about setting our benchmark lap There you go, 205.5. At this point, we've already got a much more compliant car that's got a few, that sets much faster lap times, but it still has a few issues. So, moving on, let's talk about the diff. Not gonna back out on this one. We're gonna come in, go in the tuning. So I'm still getting a bit it's a bit tricky with this car because, oops, I'm sorry. That part of the problem with this car is that I need a little more on, on uh, power oversteer, but it can spin up its tires so easily and kind of over rotate at the same time. So it'll either understeer or if you hit the gas too hard, it'll oversteer. What I ended up doing is I pushed the acceleration to 65. I've gone quite a bit of higher with a bunch of other cars. I didn't go any higher with this. Gave me a little more over rotation on the throttle, but at the same time, I'm dealing with the problem where it'll suddenly just too much throttle over rotate. So this, again, when we're talking about fine tuning or troubleshooting, with this, I will come back to the alignment and at this point, I will put a negative one on the rear. And that's just to stabilize it on the throttle. So by adding more, but at the same time, keeping it from just that snap oversteer on throttle. And I found this really helps with this car. Don't really need to go much higher than 65. I With the GT cars, I've done everything ranging from 60 uh, one say with the Porsche 17 Porsche RSR all the way up to 100 with the KTM 65 is a pretty good spot now with our much more compliant uh, turn in for the it's created a couple problem spots for us with the uh, stiffer suspension so one of the ways I'm going to address that is to raise the deceleration I only go in small amounts. With this car, I ended up at 18, so 17, 18. And one of the main issues is going up to the Corvette bridge. And I found going up to 18, even with this different suspension, this helped pretty significantly. So now we have a pretty well balanced car that has a few problems still. So at this point, there is another 
slight issue. And that comes down to braking. Since I raised the D cell, it doesn't really turn in on braking. So it makes the car more stable with the proper turn in on higher speed corners. But now on the lower speed corners under hard braking, I'm struggling more to get the car to turn in. It's only minor. So the way we're going to fix this is we are going to go into tune car and under brake balance. Changing the balance of the brakes has a huge impact. So you only want to do it in small increments. I'm literally just going to click this down one. That's it. So what that does is it basically the D cell going up keeps the car stable under that kind of lift off coast, but having the brake balance down makes it the car a little easier to turn in under braking, especially heavy braking. Camber and tire pressures. I will not blame you if you skip this optional part. Uh, it's long, difficult, and really hard to kind of wrap your mind around. Like it makes sense to me, and I try to explain it the best way I can. Uh, but definitely. It's not going to gain you a whole lot of. I found it helps stabilize the car and usually gains me a tenth or two. Uh, but if you want to skip that, just go with what I show you here: 1.5, 1.0, a default tire pressure balance, and then just go to the second step where you start lowering the tire pressures to gain more traction until you basically stop gaining traction until you stop gaining uh, time. I found though you most of the default pressures you can lower a little bit and gain time just be aware the middle of the tire will be cooler and could be uh, have a propensity to uh, wear faster we are on to the most complicated part of doing a tune at least the way i like to really dial it in uh you can kind of skip this part and go on to the next part in terms of what to do with tire pressures after you figure this out what we're doing here is we're going to figure out the balance of tire pressures and the camber for the vehicle now most of the vehicles already have decent ratios for the front to rear uh, tire pressures and for the uh, camber, if you set it to 1.5 and 1.0, you're really not that far off. Uh, that being said, this, uh, this, let, let's just say I wasn't far off. This is a complicated process, but I like doing it because I find I get a tenth or two out of really making sure those are dialed in. And, and the ironic part about it is is as you're doing this testing, you're gonna lose lap time. Uh, because, and, but that we're gonna get that lap time back on the second part. So you can skip this first part and go right on to the second part. But if you really wanna dial in your car for you, this is probably the part that you're gonna have to put in some painstaking time on. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to get on track. We're not going to make any adjustments. We already have a pretty solid tune. We know it does about a 205.5, which is already a 1.4, 1.4 seconds a lap faster than the base tune. But right now, what we need to do is dial, we're going to have to bring up telemetry again. And for setting camber and the tire pressures, I don't even bother with this screen 
I go straight to the tire pressures. And what you're going to see happen here is that the middles are going to get pretty darn cold. So what we're ending up with is outers that are much warmer than our middles. And in some cases, higher than the inner. What we're going to do in this process is we're going to even those out through some of the harder corners on the track. And at this point, we're going to use rewind quite a bit because uh, the carousel is really the big test of this. Now, you're actually, what this does is gets more even spread across the tire. It stabilizes the car. But at the same time, as the tire pressures go up, you, you, you lose grip. So you're actually going to lose time doing this, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that for now. We just want to get the proper camber set. So here we go through the carousel and we're watching our tires. And you can see the outers are getting up to the, about the right temperature. So our our 1.5 and 1.0 aren't too far off, but we want to bring those middles up. And the reason for that is, is, is that, uh, I think it's 30 and 29 is what it set at. Is that the right pressure, uh, ratio for us? So we're going to back out. We're going to do the carousel again at this time. We're going to raise tire pressures. So we're going to go back into tuning. And we're going to raise our tire pressures. Pretty significant margin. We'll go 32, 31. Now, when you're testing like this, you're not really pushing the limit of the outer tire yet. So. I know even though it was pretty even a second ago. All right, now we're testing them. It, and the problem is, is when you're using the telemetry like this, is it can take it a bit for the actual tire pressures to kind of come in line, adjusting from where they were at before. But do not pay attention to your your actual lap times by doing this. But we are, and I'm paying attention mostly to the out the left outside tires, more so than I am to the right, because most of the corners in this track are right hand turns. They are going to really put a lot of stress on the left hand tires. All I'm worrying about is bringing that middle up so that it's closer to the inner tire. And you can see that it's the inner tire is still much warmer than the middle. Even after all those corners. So we're going to we're going to go up even more. going to keep raising it until we get until the middle of the tire is actually higher than the inner tire and, and the reason for this is just a we want to know what the ideal contact patch is for the tire So you picking left hands. We can watch the right, but it's not really going to tell us a whole lot because it just doesn't get stressed enough. And you can already see we're getting pretty close. 
fact, I think the the rears are already pretty much there. And now the middle. Now you can see that the the fronts are there. That that middle is warming up quite a bit. What I'm also going to do at this point, I notice as I raise the pressure of the fronts and the adders, is that the now that now the outside of the tire isn't getting quite the heat it needs. So I'm going to rate. So I'm actually going to bring the tire pressure down again. I'm actually going to back it out farther than this since that gives me basically three strong left right handers in a row to really kind of test where the middle and the inner of the tire is. So you can see the they're still a little high there we go again we're gonna come in lower them again kind of back to where we were right this is why this is a painful process is it's you're you can do this by feel and totally skip this process this was just something that really works for me when it comes to dialing in the car You want to give the car a little bit of time to recheck that. You can see they're pretty close now. The rears are almost where they need to be. And the fronts are not. Which is interesting because I actually ended up eventually being a little different. And, and basically we're going to do this process over and over again until we get exactly the right amount that we want. One of the things I'm not doing is I'm not pushing the rears as much as I might normally because I'm not throwing the car in as much. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna throw the car in and really see if we can work the outside of that tire. Okay, that doesn't help matters. I'm trying to take it easy, I actually, uh, now let's throw it in. All right. Actually, it looks pretty even at this point. You can see the rears on the kink definitely get pretty hot there. I'm going to be okay with that. On most of the other corners, it's not going to do that. I wasn't paying attention to the road, I was watching the tire pressures. So don't mind me. Sometimes it takes a little bit, so. But at this point, I would be pretty happy with where the tires are. You 
can see that the outsides are starting to burn up a little bit on that first corner. So I feel at this point, I need slightly more camber. We're just doing it in small increments. Remember, this was about finding the camber and this was about finding the camber and the right. Yeah, this is getting loose. Don't mind my mic. Finding the right camber. And at this point, I know from previous testing that we're getting close. Because again, when you change the camber, it's also going to affect that middle tire as well. So we need to see how that happens since. So now the middle tire will be getting even more heat. So this will be the real test. And now you can see that we're just about where we want to be. Again, I'll let that go. Getting a little hot in the kink. You know you're throwing it in hard and trying to bring that rear out a bit. That's okay. The funny thing is, is the car will feel a lot better to drive while simultaneously Yeah, those rears are about perfect. surprising me is the fronts because I ended up with a okay you can see now it's starting to show that the fronts are a little low in pressure oops don't mind me as the rear is getting more heat than the front so at this point I'll come into the car and I'll bring the fronts up. And if I remember correctly, this is about 32.5 and 31 is about where I ended up to get this even. Remember, I said before, at this point, I'm like, oh, I'm expecting uh, the car to be faster, and instead it got slower. But that's okay, because it's weird. It feels better to drive, but at the same time, you're not able to hustle it through the corners as much. So now that we've made that adjustment, we just go in and we'll check it and see if it's where we want it to be. And this was a good corner that told me that something was wrong because I struggled to take it flat out once I raised the tire pressures. But I'm not going to worry about that for right now. I'm just trying to get the right balance, right? And as you can see, I'm getting just about the right balance. Middles are still a little high on both of them. So I would need to go down in pressure. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about the kink. The rear is going to get a bit hot there. As long as it's stable, that's all that matters. Very happy with the tire pressures in that in that range. Do one more corner and then we'll call the uh, tire pressure. Good. Not doing anything funny.
and they're pretty close coming out of the corner. So there you have it. That's that's how you get the tire pressures and the camber dialed in. And for the small changes I made, yeah, the car gets slower. So we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, if you skip that last part, you saved yourself a lot of pain. However, I do recommend as you get comfortable tuning the car, you might want to go back and rewatch that last part before moving on to this stage. Because if you can see, I've raised the tire pressures quite a bit, all in the sake of getting an even tire temperature across for the track. That being said, now we're going to do something entirely different. So whether you're starting off with the base tire pressures or you're moving on to from the last stage that we just did, uh, is we are going to set a base lap time. And I'll show a quick lap here and what time that gets. All right, you can kind of see I got slower. I think it was like a 205.9, uh, but I'll put that back. But that that's weird, right? So we got the car feeling good. We got the tire pressures and everything where we want it. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to lower the tire pressures by one. And you'll go back out and set another lap. See if you go faster. Chances are you're going to. Make sure you know it's the same type of lap you can do every time, not just because you messed up. You might need to give it a couple laps. Then you're going to come back, lower the tire pressure again. You're going to do a few more laps. Uh, and then you're going to see if you go quicker and how the car feels. Because you're going to have more, as you go with lower tire pre uh, pressures, you're going to get more and more grip. Then you're going to lower it again. And you're going to keep doing this process. This is actually where I ended up on this car. But I went as low as 28, 5, 27. And it was at that point, I could tell that the outside of the tires were overloading. And I was really starting to lose grip on the rear. I came back up 0. 0.5 to 29 and 27, 5. And it got better and I was able to run my fastest lap, which was like a 205.03. But then I came back to 29, 5, and 28, and that's when I ran a 204.9. It's a bit of an involved process. If you skip the last part, you can just start with the base tire pressures and start dropping them by one until you start losing lap time. Chances are you're going to start gaining lap time, and at some point you're going to lose it. Then come back up 0.5, and then another 0.5 to your previous one until you have the tire pressure dialed in. Like I said, uh, the last part I did to set the amount of tire pressure I want in the front and the amount I want in the rear. So you can see from default, I have a 1.5 difference instead of a 1. And to set my camber, which is a 1.6 and a 1.1 as opposed to my default a 1.5 and 1.0. Uh, some cars I get a bigger difference than that. Uh, with the Viper I ended up at 1.7 and 0 .0, 0 .8. Uh, if you remember, if you've watched my video on the KTM, which does not have the lowered tire pressures, uh, I ended up at a 1.4 and a 0.5. With the 0.7 being the ideal rears, I dropped at the 0.5 to actually lose some traction back there so if you just go 1.5 and 1.0 you can skip that whole last part and just start lowering your tire pressures by one until you get to the ideal tire pressures the final part of my tuning process is fine tuning and troubleshooting and this tends to be something i do as a go so i'm just kind of go over toe dampers and suspension geometry uh it's not something that you're probably going to make big changes with uh, maybe you can experiment with and learn a lot of things about how to gain massive time from them 
And if you do that, uh, let me know about it. But for the most part, these are just little things I know will, will fix minor issues I have with a car. All right, for this, man, this, this mic, I swear. It, it's all kinds of messed up. The, um, we're going to talk about uh, troubleshooting. And this is where we talk about tow, springs, uh, dampers, and suspension geometry. So, let's get into it. I'll also include little clip of examples as I was going through this process uh, where I made adjustments on this car. All right, let's get into it. Uh, front uh, toe, front and rear. Uh, I find it rare I have to really deviate from a zero zero that often. Uh, if you remember, uh, I'll show you a little clip here uh, where I made an adjustment to this car when adjusting the acceleration. I wanted more controllable oversteer to the differential, which was at 62. I raised it to 65, but I already knew I was having problems with the tire spinning up and sometimes causing it to just snap oversteer on throttle. So at this point, I took the rear toe and went to negative 0.1. That was actually enough to get rid of it. If you're still struggling after 0.1, Maybe negative 0.2. I wouldn't really go any farther than that. It can really start affecting. Once you go farther than that, it can start affecting the overall tune. Uh, front toe on this track, I didn't find really necessary. Uh, could be helpful around the carousel. Maybe click it up one. Uh, and when I show my adjustments for a Silverstone, I do believe I might actually click it up one. Uh, let's go into uh, springs. Uh, there definitely was a correction where I was diving. I had to raise the, after dropping the springs about 30 front and back, I had to go back up about 10 on both. Uh, damping. Uh, one of the big things I've found to use for damping is lowering the bump stiffness. I tend to raise the rebound two just to get a little quicker weight transfer but the big one is is if you have sudden snap oversteer while going over curbs and in situations like that lowering the rear or raising the fronts together can really help that and I find it doesn't always take a whole lot it's just kind of the balance between the front and rear. But I found like with this, it was actually 3.1 and 3.0. So I lowered it 2.9. I had raised these to 7.2, 7.1, raised that to 7.0. And it corrected most of the problem with this car. Just that one point click was enough to fix it. So don't go overboard on this. Uh, suspension geometry isn't something I'm going to touch a whole lot unless there's just some really specific problems with the car. Uh, with the KTM, I definitely use the uh, roll center change to try and get a little more rotation out at high speeds. And I imagine if you figure this out, uh, you could definitely get something out of it. Uh, with this car, all I did, I took the anti-dive from 25.5 to 26.0 and that was enough to stop it from that kind of diving in on itself under the brakes and kind of keep the, the weight shifted to the rear and keep the rears from locking up when I was under heavy braking. And I think that about covers it. Let me double check my notes here. Yep. Toe, dampers, suspension, diametry. Yeah, these are just some troubleshooting things you can use that I use to troubleshoot. I don't really go too in depth in them. Maybe someday someone will put out a video that goes in depth on dampers. 
and uh, for Forza as it works in Forza and show you how you can gain a lot more speed out of that. And I'll look forward to that. And so that about covers everything. I'm going to move on and I'm going to show you my finalized tune and then uh, show you the lap where I did 2049 and then we're going to move on to Silverstone. All right, we're here in my tunes. This is the actual finalized tune, uh, 204.9 Road America. You can find it. It is public and download it if you'd like. And we're just going to take a quick look at it. I don't believe it's very different from what I showed you while going through the process. Again, I didn't. Uh, I had done this process earlier and was struggling to figure out how to get video format. And I figured this would just be a better way to do it. It's a more truncated process. I went through it, but trust me, I did a lot more laps to dial it in. So here's my final settings, 29.5 and 28 on the uh, tire pressures. Uh, here's my final gear settings. Uh, if you remember correctly at the beginning, I had made some changes to the gearing. This is what I settled on. Uh, 1.6, negative 1.6 and negative 1.1 for the camber, zero toe on the front, negative, point, negative 0.1 on the rear, and again, seven for caster. Uh, actually, I think I was at 35.29. I actually settled on 35.28. It just makes it a bit more stable through low speed and medium speed corners. Uh, springs, this was my final settings. Uh, I think I ended up maybe not quite a little higher in the front than the rear than what I showed you. Uh, 3.5 and 4.1 for ride height. Uh, damping, as I was telling you, 3.1, 2.9, 7.2, 7.0. And I lowered the rear in tandem just so I didn't get that oversteer on uh, hitting curbs. Suspension geometry, only from 25.5 to 26.0 on the anti-dive. Didn't feel the need to change anything else. And then uh, I did end up at 330 on the front end as opposed to 310, which is what I think I showed before. Even then, as I was showing you before, I was struggling well, with uh, understeer through the carousel. So one of the bad parts about this is that it doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room for a high downforce setup at handling uh, lower speed or medium speed handling tracks or high speed handling tracks. Uh, 49 on the rear, 65 on acceleration, 18% on deceleration, and uh, steering feedback was a little low on this one, so I raised it to 115, but I am using 900 degrees for, uh, for rotation for my steering. So full steering lock here with the wheel set at 900. And with that, on to the lap.
here at Silverstone, we're going to take our tune we just created at Road America, and we're going to have to make a few adjustments. Uh, the first thing I would do, uh, if you when you're really it, wanting to dial in, and you can't do this if you're in practice right before multiplayer, but if you got some time and you just really want to dial it in, uh, go back to your spec stock that we saved earlier, reload it, oh, make sure you've saved the... the Make sure you saved your tune car already. Reload your spec stock and do some laps around this track. Get an idea of what you can do. So we'll see what mine is uh, here in a moment. All right, now you've seen my lap time for my spec stock. I have an idea. I'm going to reload my base tune or my tune from Road America, which is my base for the GT tune. And I'm going to run some laps and see what I get. And I'm also what I'm doing is I'm looking for problems I'm having during that lap. just so you're aware of what I'm doing right here Silverstone is a high downforce track so I'm just trying to maximize the amount of downforce from the tune from the get-go and then I'll work backwards from there All right, now that I've completed my laps at Road America or at Silverstone in my, my tuned car, uh, I noticed a few problems on, on the way. I had problems with uh, under braking turn in. The car was very unstable, uh, snap over steer. Also on some of the turn ins, like at Cops and at the uh, Stowe, uh, kind of the same problem. I was over rotating. And so I'm going to have to correct that. And, and that's a pretty simple fix. The other problem is, is I'm still just getting way too much understeer on high speed corners. I need that rear end to come around so I can rotate through the corner. So ideally here at Silverstone, high, high down force track, I would normally, what I would normally like to do, let me go in here, go into tuning, is I would like to raise... Let's go to our arrow. So we were at 330 and 331. I would like to raise the rear end that 14 and 14. The problem I ran into doing that is it almost exasperated the problem of the high speed underseer. And I wasn't getting any more speed out of it. And now with the extra downforce, I'm also a little slower in the straights. What I ended up doing to actually get the rotation on high speed corners is I just lowered it as far as it could go. Uh, for the break, uh, for the turn in, so I had unstable turn in at Silverstone on a lot of the corners. It, a lot of the corners are really tricky, and they're not just a simple break in a straight line for a while and come off the break. So I was just getting some snap over steer. And the way I corrected that is at Road America, I had my uh, brake balance at 49. So I moved it up to 50. This way I don't take out the decel. Like if I'd raised the, the deceleration instead, that would have affected a lot of the corners where I'm feathering the throttle. Um, and I didn't want to do that. So just by changing the brake balance back to 50, gave me those stable corner entries that I needed. And really, that's the only major changes I've made with this.
platoon at Silverstone to get, was it a 21.5, which was a significant, I believe 1.3 second gain off of, off of what our 1.2 seconds off of what I was able to set with the base. So significant gain, uh, significant gains, but at the same time, maybe not as much as Road America. And I'm kind of limited by the arrow balance. I just can't get much more arrow balance than that. So if there's some things you might be able to play with is the suspension geometry. Uh, if you can get that to help you rotate through high corners, that might help you. Also, uh, the anti-roll bars. I was struggling with uh, low speed uh, balance, just the car over rotating. So I actually ended up lowering the rear from 28 to 27. I uh, just made it a little more stable around some of those tighter slow speed corners. Uh, one thing I might suggest doing on a track like this would be raising the toe, maybe 0.1 that could help as well just want to be careful with that it does these settings and small amounts tend to have a pretty big impact and with that you see the changes i've made and then with this i got a 201.5 and i'll show you that lap and then we'll wrap things up And finally, that brings us to the end of the video. I think this is a point where I'm supposed to like wrap everything up and like review what we went over. But honestly, I'm exhausted. You're probably exhausted. The video is time stamped. Go back and rewatch things. If you have questions, put it in the comments. If you have ways I could improve my own process and things you know about the game that I don't, that I could help improve my tunes, Post it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, this is not the perfect guide, but there aren't many out there. And I want, I know I'm getting vastly improved times. I wanted to share what I know with you so that you can get vastly improved times. And with that, uh, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. With that, let's get some rest. If you made it this far, I'm glad you took the time. Peace.